My name is Ellis Lee, and welcome to my lecture on achieving academic success at Just College. If you haven't already, please go down to the description box and find the link to download this file. And then, please follow along. For this lecture, we will not cover everything that's here, but I hope when you have time, you can go through the material and find information that's useful for you. Let's begin by discussing the reasons why GIST College was made. Here is the law that established GIST College, and if you go ahead and read it, you will notice that the main reason GIST College was made was for the future economic benefit of Korea. This makes sense because Korea does not have many natural resources except for its people. Basically, you are one of Korea's most precious natural resource, and that is why the Korean government created GIST and has invested so heavily into your education. Because in a very real sense, if you fail, then Korea may also eventually fail. As you can see from this list, there are many serious problems facing Korea in the future, and that is why I created this guidebook and lecture because I do not want Korea to decline as a country. And you are a very important part of Korea's solution to these problems, and Korea is depending on you to be successful. I also want you to be successful, so let's get started. The first question you may have is, why do I have to learn English? To help answer that question, let's look at this fact sheet from Jim Casting, a professor at Pennsylvania State University and NASA researcher. If we look at the bottom of the page, he gives his advice to anyone interested in studying science. Let's see what Professor Casting wrote. My advice would be to work hard as an undergraduate. Some of the courses that have been the most useful to me were English and presentation, because if you're a successful scientist, you'll end up giving talks. Also, if you're any kind of practicing scientist, you have to write a lot of research papers. Let's think about this. Professor Casting is an American, and his native language is English. And yet, here he is telling young scientists that they need to improve their English language ability. And the reason for that is quite simple. It's because English is the international language of science. That may not be fair, but it's the reality. Therefore, as a just college student, it is imperative for you to improve your English language ability. I emailed Professor Casting to get his permission to use his NASA career fact sheet. And this is what he wrote back to me. I agree that speech and writing in English are essential to success as a scientist. I'm glad you are choosing to emphasize these points to young Koreans. Professor Casting realizes that your success as a scientist depends upon your ability to improve your English language skills. Your next question may be, what is the best way to improve my English? To help answer that question, let's turn to the wisdom of Yi so Yan. Yi so Yan, Korea's first astronaut, gave an interview to Gwangju News. It's interesting, but Yi so Yan was born in Gwangju, and she actually studied at the Gwangju Science High School, which is right next to Jis College. At the end of the interview, she said something quite remarkable. Let's see what Yi so Yan said. To do my job, I need English. But so many people try to do English first. That's not good. Have your own dream. To make it, if you need English, then it's easy to learn English. Language is something to support yourself, not the main job. And I could not agree with her more. Let's consider what Yi so Yan said. But so many people, especially in Korea, Try to do English first, that's not good. 
When I meet just college students, I'll often ask them, how long have you studied English? And the most common answers I get are between eight and 10 years. So my next question is, after eight or 10 years of studying English, what did you learn? And if the students are being honest, they will often say, I learned that I hate English, which is understandable. I think a serious problem with the Korean education system is that they make young students learn English without giving them a proper reason why. So one of the most important questions you can ask yourself right now is, in 10 or 20 years, what do you want to be doing? What are your dreams for the future? If your dreams require English, then according to Isoyan, it's much easier to learn English. And I think she's right. Have you noticed that my coffee cup has magically disappeared? Well, let me give you an example of why I think Isoyan is right. Here's a musical instrument. And if I gave you a homework assignment to practice this instrument for six hours tonight, How many hours would you really practice? If you're like most of my students, I think the answer would be zero seconds. And that makes sense. Because what's the point of practicing this instrument for six hours, especially when it's not your goal to become the world's greatest player? However, let's say your goal is to become the world's greatest violinist or soccer player. And I gave you the same homework assignment, practice for six hours tonight. How many hours would you practice? If your goal is to become the world's best, you would easily practice eight, 10, maybe more hours. Having a goal is important because it provides motivation to be successful. Without a goal or dream, Doing something seems so meaningless and pointless that it's very difficult to do well. So as Yi Soyeon stressed earlier, before you start to learn something, whether it's chemistry, physics, English, think about your goal and think about your dream for the future. Let me share with you a personal story about why I cannot speak Korean. When I was growing up in America, my mother would often take me to Korean school on Saturdays, and I would always protest. Why do I have to go to Korean school? Why do I have to learn Korean? I'm an American. None of my friends are Koreans. I, I never planned to live in Korea. Why do I have to learn Korean? If you could go back to 2013 and tell yourself, <laughs> Give yourself some advice. What right. advice would you give uh, Park Jung Hoon back in 2013? What What would be your advice to your college allies? <laughs> my advice to my old self would have been learn more Korean. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Now that I think about it, I wish I had learned more Korean. And when I talked to my mother, I apologized profusely for being so stupid. But it's hard to change the past. Don't make the same mistake I made. <laughs> Learn English. Make my life easier and learn English. After thinking about your goals and dreams for the future, and hopefully after finding the proper motivation to study science at just college, the next question you may have is, what else do I need to be successful? To help us answer that question, let's turn to the advice of James Watson, Nobel Laureate. Many people think that you have to be smart 
to be successful in science. Although that may be true, James Watson wrote, it's not enough to be smart. Lots of people are very bright and get nowhere in life. If you think about it, this makes a lot of sense. To be a student at just college, you have to be smart. And likewise, if you happen to be a student at KAIST, Seoul National, Harvard, or Caltech, you have to be smart. But will 100% of all of those students be successful? Probably not. If everyone at just college is smart, then being smart at just college is nothing special. In order to be successful at just college, you need to be more than just smart. Can you think of any other characteristics a good student should have? I bet if you think about it, you can come up with a lot. For example, a good student should be hardworking, right? Diligent, passionate, creative, uh, having good time management skills, having good social and good communication skills, responsible, ethical, considerate, knowledgeable, curious. Maybe I said that already. But the question you have to ask yourself is among all of those characteristics, how many of those do you have? And which one do you think is the most important? For me, I think one of the most important characteristics a student should have is courage. Courage is important because it gives students more opportunities to be successful. What do I mean by that? Some students will not take risks or opportunities because they're afraid of failure. And those students have very limited opportunities to be successful. If this was a normal lecture, I would show you a video of a just college student who went to KAIST and gave a presentation about why just college is better than KAIST. And she made some very good points. One of the points she made was, just college has a lot of friendly professors that are easy to talk to. However, to take advantage of that, you have to have the courage to actually go and talk to those professors. But if you don't have the courage to do so, then what's the point of having these professors on campus? They're basically useless to you. That's why courage is so important. Courage provides you with more opportunities to be successful. And if you don't have the courage to take a risk, if you don't have the courage to, to try new opportunities, there's going to be other students around you who will take those risks, who will take those opportunities. And in the long run, I believe those students will be more successful. Please think about that. And I'm from this. And <laughs> yeah, wow. I will this talk about uh, why this is better than Christ. Hmm? Mm. As you know, this is much smaller than Christ. So we are very close to every professor. We can go to professor's room every day and ask some questions. No, and no. we can go to them and ask for lunch or dinner also. and. Like this, we can ask to professors any help. And also, we have many friends. Actually, I know our college is very, my college is very small. So, whole college has only 400 students, but we know or each other. So, class has thousand students in one grade, but they don't know each other, so we know more friends. So we have more friends to help us. And our college has only maximum 30 students in one class, uh, unlike KAIS. I heard KAIS have 80 students to 500 students one class. So 
some students do cacao in class. I think it's very rude attitude for professors. We never does. No one does because too many students can't do that. And our curriculum is very hard. Yeah, it's very hard. But I think it helps us to improve. Nice colleges. Uh, I heard that uh, what is nice college is um, making us to improve when we graduate. So I think this is very nice. And we have many chances because we are 100 students. For example, going Berkeley is really nice chance for us to know friends or learning English and learn from Berkeley professors. So I think this is much better than Kais. Thank you for Wow, that was quite impressive. It took a lot of courage for her to give that presentation in front of Kai students, but she did it. Think about the qualities and characteristics you need to develop in order to become a successful student at this college. Please use this guidebook to learn about information that will be useful for you. And don't be afraid to ask for help. Because like I said at the beginning of this presentation, Korea is counting on you to be successful. And so am I. Good luck and welcome to Just College.